Today I'm going to share three stories with you guys that are absolutely crazy and happened in previous places of my employment. Undisclosed tech companies. So grab yourselves your favorite beverage, sit down and let's begin. So imagine this, you come to the office and sit at your desk, pop open your laptop, boot up your terminal, only to find out that your screen is black. There is no text, no prompt, nothing, just empty black terminal. You type in the keys, but nothing happens. It's just not working, nothing. You pop open another tab and the same thing. It's just empty, black. You're kind of stumped. What could be the reason for it? You open up Google, you browse around, you search for an answer, but nothing really works. All the settings are correct. Everything seems to be in place. And on top of that, you didn't change anything that could affect it. So why? Why would you have a black terminal, black console? It's actually key to start your working day, so you need to address this. And then you discover that on the screen of your colleague, there is a Google search opened. Why my terminal is black? Hmm, okay, so we are onto something. This is not only your uh, issue, right? It's shared. So you stand up and you ask on the open space, who else has black terminal? What's going on? And there are a few people. It's not only you and your colleague. It's actually like pretty major thing. <laughs> but there are also some people who don't have black terminal because they use white background. So you do a little bit of investigation and then you remember that you have this new colleague that recently joined company and likes to do things a little bit different. <laughs> and you bring this question to him. Why would I have black terminal at my laptop this morning? And he goes, did I do that? And then you go, did you? Turns out that your colleague decided to edit shared config file that sets environment variables for everybody in the company. And let me tell you, the company wasn't like 15 employees big. It was thousands and thousands of employees big. So right now, everybody in the company uses lines that he added to shared config. It was just something that was openly accessible on some remote machine that was just sourced as part of your uh, setup script. For some reason, whoever was responsible for managing those resources didn't you know, block other people from editing those. Maybe he thought, mm, it's useful to have it shared. Maybe good things come, will come out of it. Never a good idea though, <laughs> don't do it. He decided to spice things up a little bit because he didn't like the dull, dark black background. Instead, he chose to have different background every time he opens up terminal. So he popped open the setup and just added new lines that would set colors for him. He just failed to realize that everybody in the office who was using black background also had black text because it was part of the setup in, it, in its script. Luckily, we could just quickly reverse this and teach this colleague never ever to edit any config files on his own. Let me tell you another story. Imagine that your company has specialized laboratories, you know, full of very, very expensive equipment. And let's say that you know, just one unit of this expensive equipment is worth like two or three yearly salaries of an average employee of that company. I don't want to reveal any details, not to put anybody, you know, in harm's way in the spotlights, but let's just say that this device was supposed to connect to other smaller devices and power them up for some internal testing. You know how it is when you work in huge corporation, right? People who actually set up the equipment physically have to be in the same room. But team that actually configures the whole thing could be outsourced somewhere else, right? As long as you can access them with an online interface, it's good. So imagine that one day 
there is a fire alarm in the company and turns out that the issue is actually in the lab. So the technician goes there only to discover that one of the units is actually on fire. So without thinking too much, he just pulls the fire extinguisher off the wall, opens it up, sprays the whole thing before the actual full-blown system kicks in and showers everything with few meters of thick foam. <laughs> and he manages to resolve the issue, right? There's no longer fire, the device gets disconnected, it's now safe to get in and like actually investigate what happened. It, and it was very hard to actually discover any fault in the hardware itself because as it seems, nothing was wrong, nothing was broken. So what they did is they actually brought in an external consultancy firm to investigate the fire and figure out what was the reason, why the thing was burning. And these guys couldn't actually figure out what exactly was the issue, but what they did tell us is, well, the fire was caused by power spike. And that was it, nothing else came out of it. But then me and my colleagues remember that this other guy in the other room is actually handling these devices, you know, remotely. And he sets them up and whatever. So he must know more details about the thing. And we came to him and asked him like, hey, what's what's going on with this, this machine? And he said, oh, I don't know really. That's the first I hear of it. Uh, but there was recently a case when we had this alert that machine was kind of complaining that it's not getting enough signal or something. So I went ahead into the config files and just set everything to be, you know, twice as much. Every single option in the config, I just doubled it. And you were like, you did what? Yeah, I just doubled every single option in the config. And then we go in the config file and look what options are there. Turns out that power is one of them. So you can actually put in quite a lot of juice into the devices that are connected to this uh, unit. And we just advised him maybe not to do it again. Just, you know, to be safe. So first story actually happens in the summer. We have internships that are about to begin and we just need interns. We have many, many interested students and what we are going to do is just interview them one by one. And these things don't usually happen, you know, without any um, surprises, let's say. You bring people in, have them sit, uh, you know, in a room, ask them some questions and basically choose whoever is the best in answering those, right? Whoever has the most potential to scale when we're given the chance. Most radical or surprising thing that could happen on those is like somebody is very stressed and says something stupid and that's it. Not this time, no. <laughs> we interviewed like maybe 10 or 11 people already and we are quite tired at this point in time. This is like almost last interview uh, that we were to uh, hold on this day. Uh, you always try to have this mindset that you try to help the person that is coming in as much as you can. Picture this, me and my colleague are walking into the room and we see a person that is clearly clearly super stressed. They seem totally out of, uh, you know, their place. And for some reason, there was something just a little bit off about them. So I just offered like, maybe we can get you some water and, you know, give you a little bit time to, to calm down, right? We'll be right back. And we leave them in that room, come back with, you know, a little bit of water two minutes later, and turns out that they are no longer there. They just left. So we are like, what? So I look around and I just had this weird hunch that something's not right, something's out of place. And then I notice it. On the table that is in the interview room, there used to be a polycom unit. Like, you know, this conference call phones that are only used in corporate offices. And now there isn't one. There is just, you know, ethernet wire sticking out the hole in the table. And like, am I imagining this? Is this like me or used, there used to be a phone here? And he's like, yeah, 
what the hell? So we called the security and they managed to catch the guy in the parking lot. He's almost like off the premises. And they questioned him a little bit and turns out that he actually had this Polycom unit in their backpack. For some reason, it seemed like this wasn't their first time doing it. Dealer of illegally acquired conference room equipment. Just go into interviews, grab what you can and leave as soon as you can. And hope that nobody notices what's going on. That's quite a scenario, right? Insane. <laughs> Anyways, that's all I have for you today. Subscribe.